today I will be talking about future of organization, which is name of this book that I read. And I kind of felt that uh, it would be a nice follow up after the sorcerer's discussion. So uh, what is the book about? Basically, it tries to uh, describe how organization in our history uh, evolves, evolved and where it's heading. Um, and I think it's uh, there could be some inspiration for us. So uh, I put in the end some some sort of tips or let's call it points for discussion for us, uh, what we can uh, discuss or maybe the sorcerer group can discuss it. Uh, anyway, uh, also I feel that uh, it's uh, like this book is describing this uh, evolution of organization really from evolutionary perspective and uh, you know evolution works in a way it, is the sound terrible I'm hearing can somebody confirm okay just you all right so <clears throat> sorry Damash um, I can give you private brown back some other time uh, and you know evolution works in a way that actually <clears throat> uh you know the organisms come with like new uh new let's say functions of the body but like the old one still remains and uh so i feel that uh know the history also by knowing the history you will also sort of understand why are we in certain situation behaves uh uh that way so uh that could be another point why it's interesting anyway let's get into it so uh, the guy who wrote the book, uh, he has a couple of model. Uh, the first one is red, red one, and he called it impulsive model. And basically, uh, imagine like situation like I don't know some kind of uh, chaos, wars, whatever. And basically, you know, uh, some strong person, uh, you know, grabs the power, and basically the people uh, around that uh, person like they they follow, uh, and uh, he used this metaphor that it's like a wolf's pack. So basically, who is the strongest in the in the group is leading, and uh, all the others are following. Um, I guess, like in early days of, of our society, that that was the way how how things were organized. That the stronger strongest person was leading. Uh, so you know. In, in this model, like basically people uh, discover that, you know, power is really powerful and uh, and then they can use it and, and misuse it. Uh, I would say like uh, we can, uh, like if, if you want some culture reference, I think it's like the Games of Thrones world, like basically it's everyone is trying to fight with, with uh, everyone else and, and really it's about grabbing the power. Like this model of organization has like uh, several problems. One is that it doesn't scale. So like if you have multiple people, uh, it's really hard for you to to cover, like to control them. Uh, they can create alliance, like uh, uh, alliances, and 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 uh, you know uh, joining uh, together to to fight you and and you know to to kill you or something like that. Uh, so you need to be really cruel. Uh, but like at some point, actually, uh, they will. Uh, if you are the one, the the strongest person, at some point, somebody in your weak moment, uh, they will, they will, I don't know, kill you or assassinate you or whatever, uh, and you will lose the power. And also, there is no sort of time or or notion of any planning or strategy. It's really about like having the the position uh, to be the strongest one and I feel that uh, in uh, in our days sometimes like when there is let's say on our project or doesn't need to be like Salsita project but even like in, in current age when I don't know there, there are projects that they are you know in chaotic messy situations some people or some managers sometimes could have like tendencies uh, do things like you know everyone's are stupid you know i, I need to save everyone and and have and use really the power 
I, of course, there are also like, uh, uh, you know, those managers who are really uh, mean and cruel and, and they really misuse the power. So uh, even though this is really old model, like I feel that some parts are still, uh, still let's say, emerging. Uh, so uh, that's something which we should keep in mind. Why, why is that? But on the other hand, like frankly, th this model is is actually useful in situation. Let's really imagine like that you are in in let's say World War Two and and houses everywhere. Sometimes actually you need those strong leaders to uh, to basically uh, to show the way to 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 lead the 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 gang and basically somehow. Uh, um, you know, come through the uh, chaos, uh, if I can say this way. Uh, so even let's say in our, on our project, like when there is messy situation, like ideally some some uh, some strong person uh, will lead the situ like will lead the group and 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 help resolve the situation. So uh, there is also like I would say good things uh, that which we should uh, remember that it could be used even nowadays. So then there was like another uh, model. Uh, so imagine that after the after the like the chaos where you know everyone was uh, trying to grab the power like uh, there was lots of violence like people actually wants like order and stability. And so uh, those early companies like in the after industrial revolution like basically you know it was huge companies with you know clear strong company policies that sort of rules everything uh i would say like good example is a the government there is a clear hierarchy clear, clear roles clear classes um <laughs> i would say we have like this Czech saying uh, a krok, which I could translate as uh, shut up and, and keep walking. Uh, and uh, you know, for, for most of the people, it's actually great improvement because suddenly uh, they don't need to worry about their life. They just need to be sort of, they just need to follow the leaders. Uh, so definitely it's improvement from the, from the red model. Uh, but you know, uh, still still has some troubles in this model uh the, the 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 society or the entrepreneurs like they they discover a couple of new things that we are using in uh, a managing organization the first thing is uh, long-term planning and and establishing processes so we have processes and policies for everything we have you know five years plan and stuff like that and second discovery is like clear hierarchy so uh back then it was like basically there were planners now we call them managers and and the one who who do the job like workers um i would say like again some kind of culture reference uh if somebody likes the tv show mesh i think it's a good example basically that's how uh army works right like there there is orders and they are <laughs> very often very stupid but uh, but that how it works, or uh, Orwell 1984 is again like people are work like living in in their classes. They need to do what what's uh, uh, been told to them, and you know it's somehow working. Uh, probably not ideal comparing to, uh, nowadays, but like it's definitely better than uh, be constantly fighting. Uh, there's obviously like many problems. First, like it creates this sort of culture of we versus them, like for example, planners versus workers or workers versus managers. Uh, there are lots of politics behind uh, because there is no like discussion about the goals. The goals are very often uh, very stupid or the policies are very stupid and there is no feedback. So uh, that's, I would say, the good example is mesh like that uh, where you know the the uh people in the army needs to follow very stupid orders and frankly i think this some sort of resemblance still exists uh in uh, sometimes or appears sometimes in our thinking because you say well hey we have this policy for it uh so like just follow it and and uh we kind of, I guess, seek in some cases like this order and stability, 
And so we sort of return back to this model and to this thinking. Uh, so um, yeah, so that's that's another another uh, let's say uh, example how how like this model still exists with us. Um, but on the other hand, again, like this model was first like improvement from the red model. Second, uh, and sometimes in some situation, right when when you have let's say chaos and 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 con constant changes on on projects, actually you want some kind of order, you want some kind of stability. So in those kind of situation, you know, some kind of long term planning and 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 establishing some processes could be actually good and could actually improve the situation. Uh, but on the other hand, we should be aware that uh, we shouldn't do it in a way that exactly it creates like those, uh, you know, culture war politics uh, uh, and, and all those like negative effects. Uh, the third model. Uh, the author of the book, by the way, his name is Frederic Lelux. <clears throat> Maybe I'm spelling it the wrong way. Anyway, uh, the third model is uh, aspirational, or he called it aspir aspirational. And I would say uh, that's uh, how uh, current most of the current corporations work. Uh, so in this model, like, OK, the, the managers and, and, and owners of the companies they starting to understand that work is a bit more complicated. That if you have like just like stupid hierarchy with stupid goals, that that's not enough. Uh, but uh, not let's say they still don't really understand the whole complexity. But like they at least have some sense that uh, the world is a little bit more cor uh, complicated. Uh, like in this model, like it's it's very materialistic. Like uh, the the this term consumer society it's uh, it's definitely aligned with this uh, with this model basically it's about more is better uh, you know more money more production whatever like it's always better uh, so that's why and actually in this model basically the managers how they try to control people like in the previous model basically uh, the managers thought that the workers are stupid and they give them the, the order orders and micromanage them. In this model, uh, it's like, OK, you know, <laughs> those people are still kind of stupid, but like they are complicated human beings and they are not acting as, as we want. So we need to be more smart about that. So we give them some KPIs and, and goals for everything. There's frameworks for everything. Uh, I have here the uh, hashtag Visual A, which is the, the school that uh, I was attending to. And basically, that, that's a perfect example. Like everything or most of the stuff that we, we learn there is, is basically this, that there is framework for everything. There is some procedure for everything. And and I don't know. It's like it's like weird. Uh, I think, like again, culture reference for me is the, the wolf of uh, Wall Street, the movie, uh, basically that, you know, one thing is that every, like m more is better, more money is better, but also like like how, how the society works, like short term goals. Uh, it's really about like uh, getting more money in the next week, next month or this year. Uh, no really long term planning. Uh, I have also here like uh, mentioning Vietnam War because it was actually good example uh, of like this thinking when uh, US uh, was sort of managing the wars like uh, the the Ministry of Defense uh, what was his name doesn't matter uh, I just forget basically he has this style that he, he thinks okay everything uh, can be uh, managed by some kind of goals uh, some kind of metrics and uh, they have one metric uh, which they presented everywhere to public that will help win the war. And the metric was how many uh, enemies we will kill uh, that day, that week, or that month. And basically, you know, on first hand or, or first look, it looks like okay, that's actually a reasonable metric. Uh, but uh, what? But because the world is actually more complicated, uh, what? In reality, happen is that uh, 
that US soldiers were trying to basically kill even like uh, normal people uh, because it helps them to fulfill the metric. And, ba and there were, based on that metric, actually uh, promoted to, to better roles and, and they have some, some bonuses and stuff like that. And that, uh, that led to a situation where actually the citizens of Vietnam started to to align with, with the enemy instead of uh, the US. And that's actually the reason why uh, US lost the war, because uh, instead of like sort of bringing the peace and prosperity, they actually alienated the, the whole uh, citizenship there. And uh, by basically seeking short term goals uh, that on first sight uh, looks uh, good, uh, good enough, let's say, uh, in the end, like in long term, it, it was, uh, you know, a tragic, tragic uh, decision. In this model, like the entrepreneurs, uh, they discover new uh, discoveries, uh, how to manage organization. One is like innovation. Uh, people starting to realize that, you know, world is not state static. Uh, we can do something about it. We can keep improving, uh, in improving it. Uh, so that's one thing. So uh, then second thing is that people are actually responsible. So uh, if, if we made them responsible, they can act on their own. Uh, so that's why we have all those KPIs that we give them a little bit of space in exchange for like some results. And also uh, meritocracy, which means that, you know, in the previous model, basically it was hierarchy that couldn't be changed. In this model, okay, we still have hierarchy, but people can climb in the ladder uh, based on their results. Uh, so again, it's it's definitely an improvement comparing to the previous model because uh, it, you can do something about your future. Uh, I have a little bit of more freedom, uh, but still that there, there are some troubles. Uh, organization like that are sort of treated as machines uh, that's why it's everything is treated or is is managed by different metrics and like in short term it's sort of working but actually in long term those organization uh, are very unstable uh, and uh, we can see it in in, in crisis that like you know uh, companies like Enron uh, in the in the uh, last uh, crisis like basically they were before the crisis, they were uh, perceived as very successful companies, but suddenly uh, when the uh, crisis hit us, it, it, it was shown that, you know, basically they were faking all the internal uh, KPIs and other metrics in order to get like short-term goals. Uh, but actually uh, that was the reason why like in long term uh, they, they didn't survive. The other issue is, <laughs> is that Okay, it's great that people are actually can climb the ladder and and go to the top, uh, and it's really based on their uh, let's say abilities. But the issue is that uh, sometimes because it's all managed by all those like uh, KPIs and sort of short-term goals, what they are trying to do is really meet those goals and sometimes sort of please the please the people that are deciding about them. And again, it's uh, it's probably definitely better culture than it in the previous uh, organization but still far from far from ideal um i would say this model is i would say still the most uh, used uh, uh, like globally let's say uh and uh, we still see that you know uh, managers very often say well we need to have concrete measurable goals and and things like that uh and again, for example, if you are studying management on uh, Vesha, like you, you will hear this. Uh, but I want to point out that it's it's really now it's I think it's all system and okay, there are definitely many good things and the KPIs on it, so it's not a bad thing. Measure something, uh, but we need to know uh, the consequences of it as well. Uh, then there is. Uh, pluralistic model green model uh, the metaphor is it's that the company organization works like family uh, for me it's like 
the culture reference i would say it's like how how hippies uh, work like you know that we are all uh friends families we are one huge family uh and, and things like that uh in this system basically you know it tries to fight with like the injustice and inequality in that system uh it tries to uh work uh based on consensus uh, basically for everything uh one one good thing is that uh it uh, like the people in the organization now understand that people actually have emotions that's something new uh before it there was no there was no space for emotions so suddenly we have emotions uh, definitely uh terms like democracy is is mentioned a lot uh Pluralistic organization, I think, bring to to how organizations are ma managed. Uh, transparency that you know suddenly people uh, knows about most of the things. Uh, so that's definitely a good thing. If I specifically talk about the like sort of new discoveries in this phase, is that we can empower people. Uh, that uh, you know the bottom up approach where we actually empower the workers at the bottom it actually brings lots of results and we treat them really nicely as normal human beings we don't think about them that they are bad or lazy or anything that it actually has uh, really good results uh, there is also discovery that if the organization has some let's say inspirational vision and that uh, the culture is based on some some uh, like real values that you are not you know working for that organization just because of the money but because i don't know you want to save the planet or i don't know in our case maybe you just want to build a good product for somebody uh it's it's something different like in the previous organization it was everything about like materialistic basically about money uh now it's it's not just about money money are still important but uh you are also doing something because you want to have some impact on the world. The uh, last discovery is that uh, is, is stakeholders. Like in, in, in this model, like people realize that uh, actually the, the hierarchy is uh, not ideal because many things actually you need. It is good to know opinions and feedback from from other people that are somehow involved and that sort of doesn't fit the the normal uh, hierarchy so uh, they came with this uh, like term stakeholders that you are asking other people for the feedback and so on and and that's uh, definitely a, a good thing uh, so again this is a great improvement especially uh, comparing the previous model about the culture like uh, people in those organizations are way more happy uh and and they feel that they are doing something not just for money but because they want to really change something there are a couple of problems uh because basically this this kind of organization very often work on really like 100 percent consensus that everyone can like can discuss everything everyone uh has sort of right for everything because everyone's are equal uh, there is problem that sometimes those organizations are unable to act, uh, especially in some, um, let's say, difficult situation. Uh, also, like the responsibility is not that clear. If you have clear hierarchy, okay, you know, this guy and that guy are responsible for something. Here, because everyone sort of discussing everything, sometimes this uh, this feeling of responsibility for given uh, task or given project is sort of lost. And also there, there is the problem that um, because everyone is equal, that everyone can feel, OK, I have right for everything. Uh, and it doesn't matter how much value I bring to the organization. I can take as much as uh, everyone else. So uh, that's uh, sort of a problem uh, that uh, those kind of organizations are, are facing. Uh, one big problem in this organization or like, let's say, one uh, uh, manifestation of like th this thinking is in, in let's say current management is that you want to talk about everything all the time and it's basically endless meetings and uh, and sort of nobody or 
there is no one who, who who would do the decision and take the responsibility so those kind of things is is definitely also um basically part of uh, our management i don't know for example Salsita, which model is the closest one probably we have a little bit of green maybe a little bit of orange and then a little bit of the next one that i will i will talk about but uh, that frankly doesn't matter what matter is that uh in acting of all of us uh, all those like models sometimes like sort of appear and and uh, it's good to know uh, like uh if it's a good thing or bad thing and somehow be self aware and 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 mindful about those kind of things to to like improve like how we uh treat each other um let's go next so and this is the last model uh this is the model that he is promoting that this is the future he call it uh evolutionary so the the, the previous model the metaphor there was like it's working like a family in this it's more like it's it's a living system it's basically as a nature that everything is evolving uh and like in this model you know the entrepreneurs they acknowledge that world is complex and they have no way to really fully understand it and they are not playing sort of gods to know everything exactly the the other way uh, the leaders are really not managing people but are more like sort of na uh, naturing the system and trying to uh to focus on like where the system is not working uh, rather than on the people itself because uh, you know they really believe in that people can self-organize uh, themselves, and also there is no hierarchy uh, in a in a way that nobody is appointed as a leader, but anybody can be a leader. Comparing to the uh, previous model, the green one, uh, basically in the previous one, it was like everyone's are equal, everyone has the same sort of responsibility. In this case, it, they saying. Uh, well, anybody can. Well, everyone are are still equal, uh, but definitely, if somebody is acting as a leader, he's a leader, and every, and sort of others should follow. So, uh, I would say in this case, it's sort of organic hierarchy uh, rather than like uh, either no hierarchy at all or some some uh, given hierarchy, firm solid hierarchy. So that's the difference. In this model, basically, the companies that they are uh, using this model, they they discovered the the magic of self-organization, like that the team, if they are small, uh, they can uh, act, manage themselves. Uh, there is a big, um, big uh, or big emphasis on like wholeness that you know. Uh, it's not about short-term goals like we should uh, think about uh, stuff in context uh, and also that uh, it's not just about uh, you know making money but the organization should have some evolutionary purpose and then the uh, organization works better uh, I do not understand that uh, this what I said. Like it seems that one uh, big theoretical exercise, uh, which is to some degree true. But like there are few organizations that actually are using this model for actually many many years, uh, and uh, uh, very often I kind of feel that like uh, people are saying, okay, oh those those kind of organization that only like IT companies, smaller companies, and stuff like that. But on this uh, example, I wanted to show that actually uh, this book actually like uh, research companies that are not IT and, and they are not small. Uh, like for example, the first one, they have like 40,000 people and they are managing uh, power plants all, the, all around the world. Uh, the second one, it's basically uh, in healthcare industry. Uh, the third one, it's uh, automotive supplier, again, 5,000 people. Uh, so it re it really this is really not just about IT companies but uh, about uh, many others uh, or it can work in any industry and definitely uh, it's not just for smaller or medium companies. 
Uh, there are no three, three principles, so I, I would like to maybe a little bit discuss uh, them more. So what, what does it mean self-organization? It's really, it's about like small team that, but where there are no, no bosses. Uh, the goal there is actually like the green one, they try to give uh, uh, sort of power and voice to everyone. But basically, if you have, you know, 30 people, it's really hard to manage those kind of discussions. So uh, in this case, they are saying, OK, let's have a smaller teams. They can self-organize them, but uh, uh, there will there we will that way creating the small teams. We will prevent this inability to to act and be responsible. So small self-organized teams. That's that's the way. Actually, the teams are created like voluntarily. Uh, people can join and and leave the team as they want. Uh, which again, uh, because it's evolutionary system, like from evolution perspective, basically the teams that are successful successful like people will try to join them and the team that are not uh, let's say handled and work well they will uh there will be closed or they will uh like everyone will leave them uh people like in this model like they consult things with others because they they understand that work is complex and they don't have all the wisdom but on the other hand, uh, it's not like that that people would vote on those things. It's like that people are actively trying to collect all the information from all the stakeholders, but uh, the decision uh, is on them. Uh, I was talking about that one company that is uh, managing power plants all the way around the world. And there was an interesting example that, for example, one guy in that company uh, had an idea that they want to build uh, their first power plant in Pakistan, I think. And frankly, basically, the, many people said, oh, okay, that, that's stupid. You know, the, the government, it's it's very unstable environment. Uh, uh, it's It will be very hard to do. But on the other hand, they said, but if you want to do, if you want to be responsible, responsible for it, go for it. And there was no voting, no, like, board, uh, the company board, or anybody was, like, sort of, uh, agreeing with this like basically say hey like it's your responsibility to do it or or fail and he did it and actually he built it uh and it was you know project for i don't know really expensive i, I have no idea how, how much like probably billions of dollars something like that uh so but but it worked and there was no like sort of consensus no no group decision it was just one person taking a lead there are, for example, no budgets. Like it's really people's responsibility to to uh, be aware about the cost. Uh, for example, if they I don't know buying some some tools they need and and stuff like that. Uh, they are just trying to be, let's say, they should be responsible for that they buy only things that they really need, uh, and in exchange they give they they get freedom that they can buy whatever whatever uh, they want. Uh, since they are small teams and obviously if they are if it's a big company it's it's a huge uh, or there's a large amount of uh, large large amount of uh, of teams so how they solve that is that basically teams are closing uh, they are uh, making contracts between them uh, so uh, that's the way how actually uh, those teams interact there's also interesting thing that uh, there are obviously some managers and some kind of supportive roles outside of the teams, but actually the teams are hiring the managers and the supportive roles. For example, if there is some kind of coordination roles for, I don't know, in exchanging best practices ac uh, across the teams, like the teams need to hire somebody for that position. So it's not like that the somebody like the boss of the company will say, hey, we need this position to uh, to spread the knowledge across the team is the other way. Like the team say, hey, it would be nice if somebody uh, take care of spreading the knowledge. So it's the other way around. So it's interesting. Wholeness, uh, there's no like company wide KPIs. Like the team itself, they can have their own KPIs, but it's just for them. Nobody will punish them uh, if, if they will not meet them. It's really up to them how they want to sort of measure uh, the, the progress they are doing. It's really about 
not really managing people. As I said, it's really about managing the, the environment. And uh, there's like big emphasis on uh, keep learning because yeah, the world is complex and there's always things that we don't know. And uh, if we know them, we can do better than let's say competition. Uh, evolutionary purpose, uh, it's about really strong vision and uh, Sort of replace the short-term goals with some 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 uh, some strong purpose that that uh, give the company like some uh, let's say purpose and and sort of motivate people to to go even through some like crisis and stuff like that because they feel okay I'm, I'm doing something here that is that has that has meaning so that that's the theory uh, and. Uh, there was a couple of practices that I like in that book, and uh, maybe it's a little bit out of context, but uh, I kind of feel that we can maybe uh, think about it uh, in, in Salzita because uh, I think it's a nice idea. So one was obviously like in those companies, self-organizing, like how, for example, they are managing salaries. And there was like two examples uh, or two ways of some or, uh, organization uh, in this last uh, of this last type are doing that and uh, basically they want to remove uh, the need that some boss is saying oh hey like, the salary should be this and that for you and and basically giving grace uh, just based on opinion of one person so uh, they have for example this a this first model is basically based on reviews so uh, they uh, you know let's say once in a year or something like that they ask uh, all the people uh, that work with this person uh, if this person if they if they think that this person is contributing either less or more uh, than than him or herself and basically so uh, there is this range from minus three to plus three so plus three means that okay he's really contributing contributing way more than me or minus three is like this person is contributing way less than me and on the other hand the person uh, that is sort of asking for, you know, a salary review is uh, evaluating how people like if this if this people that uh, is giving this sort of score, uh, if uh, this person is actually a good person to evaluate me because you know sometimes I work with somebody just occasionally, with somebody I work uh, very often, and uh, by that I evaluate like how strong. Uh, their opinion should be and then there is some kind of algorithm that basically uh, take this data and and based on that there is some suggestion how how uh, you know the huge let's say the salary uh, should be or how huge the uh, salary uh, increase should be then there is a second model uh, which I kind of like a little bit more I think and it works in a way that Actually, people are suggesting how much they should have or how much uh, they should uh, get a raise. Uh, and they are doing in a way that, let's say again, once a year, they write a letter where they say how much they think they deserve. And uh, then they should also uh, write down a you know, couple of bullet points. Why is that? For example, I don't know, last year I, you know, I don't know, improve how we work in this sphere or that sphere, or I learn this new technology, whatever, like some, some reasons uh, how, how they, let's say, benefit the company. And then there is like elected commission uh, across the company, sort of the same way, for example, how we now uh, are uh, voting and electing the, the sorcerers. And there are a couple of people, I don't know, let's say three peoples, and, and uh, they receive this letter. They also collect feedback from all the peers from that person. And uh, basically they give that person a suggestion uh, comparing to others. Like if, if, if it's, uh, let's say, if what he suggested, let's say that you, I don't know, that, that person, that guy, let's say, uh, he wants 10% uh, increase of salary and they will tell him, well, you know, based on your feedback and uh, the reasons why and comparing to others we think that you should deserve only five percent or actually the other way 
uh, it they could, for example, the guy say, okay, I want just like two percent raise, and they say, but actually, you know, if we uh, look at it objectively, uh, you you deserve uh, way way more, and we suggest you that you ask for for more. So uh, I think that that's interesting inspiration, like inspirational systems. Uh, again, uh, it's it's just copy from from the book, but. Uh, what I like is that th this, those kind of systems are trying to uh, achieve some kind of justice and in, in the salaries and and uh, and, and rewards and and I kind of like that. So th that's one thing that I like in that book. Also, uh, there's a suggestion like because very often when there are conflicts in the company and frankly that happens even even Salsita very occasionally, but sometimes it happens and basically. Uh, they say you know usually uh, it works like that that the boss needs to somehow handle this conflict uh but again like uh, this evolutionary model is about being responsible and so basically they trying to make the people that are in the conflict actually responsible for handling the conflict which is interesting so uh what they suggest is that first the the people needs to try to handle the conflict uh between themselves. Uh, second point, they should agree on asking some third person, whoever in the company. Uh, definitely doesn't need to be uh, any manager or any, let's say, some higher role in the company. It could be really anybody, uh, even cleaning lady. That's completely fine. Uh, and basically, that person should be sort of facilitator of that conflict. Hopefully, that will help. But if uh, if those guys are still having uh, troubles, then uh, usually there is some kind of uh, council group of people, something like uh, we now have the sorcerers that basically they will raise the issue there, uh, and uh, the sorcerers should somehow, in our case, would uh, would help them. Uh, what I like on this system is that really it puts the responsibility responsibility of handling the conflicts on the people itself and it's not really because very often you know when you when you need to somehow resolve conflicts uh, between two people and you should, very often it's happening that uh, the managers they don't have the information because they are not closely working with those people and then it's really hard to somehow uh, you know resolve it in in the the best possible way so this kind of conflict resolution uh, I definitely like. In one company, there was also like fourth step that actually, uh, uh, after, even if the, because actually the panel or the sorcerers in our case, they have only, they don't, they can do any decision. They can only sort of facilitate the, the, the discussion. But if still like uh, both those parties are, uh, like not happy and they still feel the conflict is there uh, they can also ask uh, the other person to quit the company so which is interesting model i'm not sure if it's a good model but like definitely interesting so basically in normal companies let's say uh, always the managers are uh, firing people or you know asking people for to leave but in this case it's actually the you know the normal person can ask somebody to leave if, if for example, he or she feels that uh, he's not good fit and he's, I don't know, uh, doing doing uh, something that uh, they shouldn't be doing or something like that. So that that's interesting. Third thing, frankly, I don't know. I, I was thinking because th there was lots of, um, let's say, uh, examples how those companies, the teams in the company are self-organizing that you can join the team that you want and leave the team that you want. And definitely there are lots of arguments why it's a good thing. Uh, because again, like basically the, the teams that are working good, uh, they have good approach uh, to work. Uh, they are thriving and, and people are joining the, or trying to join those teams. So uh, definitely I see lots of benefits. Uh, the issue in our case is, I would say that uh, that we have zillions of practical issues how to do that, um, which uh, is not not uh, easy to solve. Uh, because, for example, let's say just as thought experiment that we we would allow that, uh, that would mean that basically, you know, 
person A want to leave uh, project B, but you know, in our case, it's not really an internal project. It's we need to discuss it with clients. Uh, very often there is some onboarding period. Very often uh, you, you cannot do it from day to day, and, and you know, zillions of practical issues. And frankly, uh, you know, if somebody, for example, wants to leave some project again. Theoretically, I would be fine with that. But on the other hand, I would like those person who, this person who wants to make the change sort of responsible for all those changes because it definitely creates some disruption. And uh, that person who wants the change uh, needs to be responsible for, for handling that uh, uh, disruption. So frankly, I'm not sure if it's possible in our case because you know, it's really complicated the, the way how we acquire new clients. It's very unpredictable. Uh, the projects are, every project is different, needs different skill and so on. So again, there's zillions of practical issues, but definitely I see um, a value uh, in those kind of thinking that people can really self-organize in uh, on this level. So again, here I have no idea how to do it, but if anybody has some idea, like definitely I would like to hear it because I think it's uh, interesting theoretical uh, exercise um so yeah uh, if somebody has some some idea let me know and yeah that that's pretty much it um uh, again those, those ideas it's really what i just copied from the book uh, maybe once we establish sorcerers i will write something down to to uh, propose something in in that direction uh, uh but uh, this was really for sort of giving us uh inspiration how we can move salsita even further i think that you know many 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 things uh we are already doing we have you know great culture and everything so uh but definitely there is always room for improvements and uh modern organization should be evolutionary and we should uh, always try to to be better so uh that's why i did this presentation so that's all. So if anybody has any question, feedback, 